should sure is a presumptuous word, isn't it? As if I, someone with under 200 subscribers on YouTube, know better than a multi-million dollar corporation that produces the biggest RPG in the world. Yet should is an evocative word, and I'd like people to actually click on this video, so we're going for it. Aside from some homebrew, which we do talk about every Wednesday, by the way, I don't have much experience designing or balancing a game, so take all of this with a grain of salt. D&D releases a lot of new content and even test content via Unearthed Arcana, yet in all the time 5e has been out, we've only gotten one new class, one semi-canon class, and one Unearthed Arcana class, and that's it. Fifteen classes while races are in their 60s, so maybe we remedy that. And did you know that you're one of the subscribers that we should add? Subscribe to us. We're trying to get 250 by the end of the year. Clicking the like button is also appreciated. As always, thank you to our patrons, Remy Sweet and Of Winter. Do check us out in there. And let us know any classes you think D&D should add in the comments. I am the Penitent with College of Lore, and this is 10 classes D&D should add. Honorable Mention. Planeswalker. Okay, so this is closer to a prestige class, and maybe it could be a subclass of something else, but I want to see how wizards would take it. Magic and D&D have become very familiar bedfellows these past few years, having several races, settings, and even one campaign based entirely on the world of Magic the Gathering. So why not make Planeswalkers a thing? Planeswalkers are beings in the universe of Magic with the ability to traverse between the planes of the multiverse. They tend to have strong magical abilities, so you figured they'd be full casters, but frankly, who knows? The ability to travel between planes is potentially game-breaking, so I understand why it isn't currently a thing, but I'd love to see how wizards would balance it in a way that doesn't derail campaigns entirely. Or your players could just not abuse the social contract. Number 10. Peasant. Call it what you will, peasant, deprived, or unclassed, but this is a concept that's existed in the mind of many a home brewer over the years. The idea is pretty simple. You're just a guy, a normal person who's never picked up a blade, bow, or spellbook, and is hopelessly outclassed at level 1. This is often played as a Magikarp of classes, having to struggle through being next to useless for a few levels before hitting a crazy spike in the late game. Some people like to give you no abilities, but a bunch of ability score improvements. Some people let you copy the abilities of other players, but the best and most earnest to me is one that makes the abilities themed around how little you know and how much better you're getting. Subclasses can specialize in swordplay, magic, and other vague vibes that resemble but don't copy existing classes. Still, if wizards did make this, probably best not to bring this one to Adventurer's League. Number 9. Demolitions As a wise man once said, my main goal is to blow up, then act like I don't know nobody, and following on from that advice is the Demolitions class. Explosives are the name of the game for this class, dealing heavily in all things that go boom. Subtlety is normally out the window, but the damage factor alone could be cool to see, though not so much when it's collateral. This is a class I would have this is a class I would see having abilities that increase damage, protect certain people from exploding weapons, and even have effects like sorcerer's metamagic options. The subclass would specialize in grenades, mines, rockets, bombs, and even magic artillery. Who knows, maybe this idea will blow up. Number eight, knife fighter. That's a funny way to spell rogue. While the Knife Fighter could be a fun rogue subclass, I like the idea of someone who doesn't necessarily strike from the shadows, but someone who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with massive monstrosities, wielding only a small blade in their hands. Abilities for this class would range from increasing damage, you'd need to, uh, increasing accuracy, and maybe even the speed at which you throw these weapons. The knives may never do more than a d6 or d8 at high levels, but if you're throwing a fistful of them on every attack, you can pretty well keep up. Subclasses would include specialization in throwing, in countering bigger opponents, and of course assassination, maybe even a poisoner or enchanter. It's probably too close to Rogue or even Fighter to ever be officially printed, but it's a really neat design space, I think. Number 7. Merchant. You know what D&D lacks? Classes that are bad at combat. All comments about the Ranger to one side. Bad at combat may be the wrong word, but having combat not be their primary skill set is. I get that D&D is mostly a combat game, but it's not exclusively that, and that's not true to all playstyles. Enter the Merchant, a class that will be able to survive in combat, but thrive outside of it. Most of the class abilities would revolve around charisma-based skills, and maybe even a half-caster with a lot of spells like Gift of Gab or Charm Person. While they'd have a few combat abilities, they'd likely even have bonuses to talking down hostile creatures. Subclasses could revolve around caravan traders, shopkeepers, and even con men. I like to think the merchant could make wizards a little bit of money. Number 6. Parallel Classes Initially, this one sounds kind of odd, so let me explain. Cleric and Paladin are what I would consider parallel classes. They are the full caster and melee attacking variant of the same vague idea, a holy warrior. I know paladins don't technically have to follow a god, but it's the same idea. You could also, to a lesser degree, argue that ranger and druid, barbarian and sorcerer, and even fighter and wizard are the same parallel. I've long held the belief that Hexblade should be its own class and that Warlock should be a full caster, functioning as different executions of the same idea as making a pact with an otherworldly being. I also think that full caster blood-oriented class, like a blood mage, should exist in the same way, slotting up with blood hunters. As for monk and artificer, I leave that to the comments. Number 5. Brawler Kinda of weird that there isn't a pure punching things class beyond the monk, isn't it? The idea behind the brawler is a normally strength-based class who primarily uses kicks and punches. 
There isn't a ton to it, it's pretty straightforward, you just throw a couple haymakers. The class abilities would mirror, to a degree, fighter abilities, focusing on things like damage and hitting more efficiently, and would probably have the same amount of extra attacks and ability score improvements as the fighter. As far as subclasses, I think a performance fighting boxer, a brutality focused pit fighter, and a tinkering gauntlet or prosthetic based class are a good start. This seems like one of the simplest ideas. No weapons, no key mechanics, just punching. Number 4. The Noble. Well, nobles, merchants, and peasants all on the same list. Starting to feel a little like I'm creating some weird class dynamics here. Nobles, conceptually, would be a varied class, the idea being that a lot of baseline abilities would be fairly generic, largely having to do with having money, power, and politics. Like the merchant, a lot of options for this class would be based more around non-combat expertise. The main draw, at least in my mind, is subclasses for these guys. Everything from the heavy support crown prince or princess, to the combat-focused knight, to the charisma-based politician, or even the more brutal and stealthy exile, there are a lot of really cool options here. It gets a little complicated when they're in line for the throne, though. Number 3. The Mentalist. Sheer curiosity, but does anyone remember The Mentalist on CBS, or was that my weird fever dream? 5e has let us down in one major way, psionics. D&D has always had a love-hate relationship with psionics, making them either way too powerful to the point there's no reason to play anything else, or so weak that nobody would ever want to play them. While The Mystic was released in Earth Arcana, they've barely touched the psionic design space since then. I don't know how to balance them, honestly. I certainly don't know better than Wizards, and I don't really mind if the players at my table are unbalanced, but I know a lot of players do. That being said, I just want to see a class that relies entirely on psionic things, in both class and subclass abilities. I'd love to see an illusion crafter, a manipulating memory bender, or a mind-controlling puppet master. You know, I'm starting to see why these abilities are hard to balance. Number 2. Medic. I have no idea how this isn't already a thing, honestly. The medic would be a non-magical healer, serving the role of a battlefield medic. There's a cool design space to make healing weapons, either a dark gun that heals on a hit, or a staff that radiates healing light similar to the staff of someone like Mercy from Overwatch. In my mind, abilities would rely heavily on, well, healing, obviously, but also on not being perceived as a threat, and on offering other buffs. Subclasses are a bit wonkier here, but a more combat-oriented medic, a surgical augmenter, or a life-draining healer are just some things off the top of my head. I think a dedicated healer that isn't necessarily religious is a really cool idea. Number 1. Gunslinger. Gunslingers as a concept have, in recent years, gotten a major spike in popularity, thanks to Alice and Jaffe. Percy aside, I think players have wanted to use guns for a long time now, and while there is some subclass support, I have the potentially hot take that guns shouldn't be cripplingly difficult to use with jamming and long reloading mechanics. I know guns weren't around in medieval times, but neither was real, actual magic. Obviously this would come with a gun at character creation, and a large majority of their abilities would involve augmenting and buffing said gun. As far as subclasses, Revolver, Trickshot Artist, and of course Sniper do immediately come to mind. Then again, maybe Sniper should be its own class. If only someone did a video about that and left the link in the description. That's our list. Thank you so much for watching. And let us know what classes you think D&D should add in the comments. Thank you for watching this video from College of Lore. Remember to like this video, subscribe to join the party, and have a fantastic adventure.